once the world's biggest terror threat, now a haunting quandary. Je sais que la France a peur des enfants, mais les enfants sont pas dangereux. The so-called Islamic State spread hatred and unimaginable horror. Now what is left of it, including children born to members of the terror group, present the West with the hardest question yet. What to do with them? Si on règle pas, on rapatrie pas ces, ces gens-là, et si on fait pas un procès public pour tout mettre sur la table, on va tout foirer une fois de plus. Are these the new faces of terrorism? or the victims of a barbaric reality they never chose. Quand lui il part à la guerre, il ramène trois comme ça pour que non on enlève leur tête. While they wait for a second chance, western governments avoid reality. He would like to go back to Germany now. But for how long? Je l'ouvre une nouvelle période de la crise. Il a dit qu'il y a un chenabi, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y a un According to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, children have the right to life, to a name, to protection, to health care and education. But for a particular group of children now stuck in northeastern Syria, those rights seem like a distant reality. After surviving the horrors of war, just staying alive is an everyday battle. These are the children born to one of the most brutal terrorist organizations the world has ever seen. They are what is left of the so-called Islamic State, albeit unintentionally. Since the fall of Bagus, ISIS's reign is over, reduced to an empire of wreckage and dust. Moath doesn't claim victory. Nobody here does. They may not understand the rules of the game they were forced to play, but the children know they have lost. Moath's father brought him from Dagestan, a country Moath no longer remembers. After the fall of ISIS's last bastion in Syria, captured fighters were placed in detention and their families in what amounts to internment camps in the northeast of the country. Al Raj near the border with Iraq, Ain Issa, near the so-called Caliphate's former capital, Raqqa, and the biggest, most precarious, Al Hol, now larger than the nearby town that gave it its name. Here, aid workers were told to prepare for an influx of 10,000 people. Over 60,000 flooded to the area. They include internally displaced Syrians and Iraqi refugees and others. According to Kurdish officials, the camp of Al Hol holds some 11,000 foreigners with perceived or actual associations with ISIS. Among them, there are over 7,000 children under the age of 12. Nobody here, including camp officials and aid workers, is sure of the children's identities or where exactly they're from. Some are either too young or too traumatized to remember. Others don't speak any language understood by local staff. They also don't know what kind of atrocities these children have been exposed to. The only thing everybody here is certain of is that their most basic needs are not being met and that they face serious risks. There are at risk of abuse, there are risk of uh, exploitation, there is a lot of risks like harassment, sexual exploitation. There could be uh, child marriage, 
it, which is spreading very widely in the camp. It could be uh, child labor. Uh, there, is, there is a lot of risks. There's also really. risk of disease of, Definitely. of falling into the, this, septic. Yeah, uh, it's very easy to get sick. Uh, there is no proper, very proper health services. It's very complicated situation in the camp. There is thousands of people where there's few clinics with a very limited services. The People's Hospital of Hasaka is where emergency cases from our hall are brought for treatment. So Habe has just undergone surgery, but still needs reconstructive procedures for serious burns that cover his body. A fire in Sohabe's tent killed his mother and two brothers and nearly cost him his life. Now the eight-year-old, who says he's from Morocco, is alone and in shock. <laughs> <laughs> what caused the fire on Sohaib's tent will most likely not be investigated. But camp officials report that torched tents are a recurring form of punishment inflicted on those perceived as not following the laws of radical Islam in Al Hall. Managing authorities say the rules of ISIS's caliphate live on here. The issue of how radical these people are has prevented many governments from taking back their citizens over fears they will pose a significant security risk. But could leaving them in these conditions be an even worse idea? It's very, very crowded. Under the tents, the families say it's unbearably hot. They have no potable water, very little to eat. Life here in our hall is so difficult for these people that many have been telling us they miss the Islamic State. You would like to go back to Daesh? The children of our hall say they miss their old life too. Was he in Raqqa? Raqqa? Eh? How was Raqqa? How was Raqqa? Do you like this camp? I didn't get a chance to tell Nasser Iraq had reportedly agreed to repatriate some of its citizens from Syria as many as 6,000 people were expected to return. For other foreigners, things aren't as clear. At the so-called annex, 
the section of our hall where they are held, we meet M from France. She agreed to speak to us under the condition we protect her identity. The 31-year-old is afraid of people's reaction if she is allowed to go back. Moi, je sais que je ferai pas de mal à une mouche. Maintenant, évidemment, je comprends qu'on peut pas en croire sur parole. She decided to leave her home country shortly after the attacks on the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo in 2015. Instead of opening her eyes to what the Islamic State was capable of, she says the attacks showed her a darker side of France. Et après, tout a changé. Les gens ont peur de nous, les gens ont commencé à nous menacer, à me menacer moi, et quand ça m'a touché moi, ben là j'ai dit non, je peux, j'y arrive plus, je peux pas, je peux pas, il faut, je choisis un endroit qui, qui m'appelle en fait, viens, nous on te prend comme tu, comme tu es, tu, tu, tu veux cet islam que nous on appelle, viens avec nous. Et qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce que tu espères là maintenant, parce que, Effectivement, la France euh, n'est pas en train de te dire euh, « viens, on te Bien, prend comme voilà. tu veux ». Au contraire, Au contraire. Euh, tu comprends la peur des gens euh, actuellement Tu comprends qu'ils puissent, euh, qu puissent avoir peur de toi parce qu'ils ne savent pas trop Oui, je comprends, mais moi aussi j'ai peur d'eux. Moi aussi j'ai peur d'eux. J'ai peur. J'ai peur pour ma sécurité, pour la sécurité de mon fils. Et je crois que pour le coup, ils sont plus en force que moi. Moi, je suis toute seule, ils sont des milliers. Donc, euh, ils ont peur comme j'ai peur. Et on nous dit le contraire parce que surtout. Back in France, her father is also afraid, which is why we won't disclose his identity. He's afraid and angry. J'apprends euh, un, un sentiment qui était loin de moi, mais très loin de moi. J'apprends la haine. Je les hais. Ces gens-là, euh, nos gouvernements, je les hais. Voilà. On n'a pas le droit, on n'a pas le droit de laisser souffrir des enfants. On n'a pas le droit. The children he refers to include his grandchild, a six-month-old baby who is stuck in a hole in what he describes as deplorable conditions. Euh, les enfants qui boivent de l'eau croupie, euh, les trucs euh, qu'ils ont tous la diarrhée, etc., etc., etc. Ils vivent sous 50 degrés. Là, actuellement, on se plaint de la canicule parce qu'il fait, fait 40 degrés en France. Là-bas, ils sont avec des mômes, avec de l'eau rationnée, qui est dégueulasse, qui est etc., tout ce qu'on veut. Il fait 50 degrés. Et on dit rien. Et on fait rien. C'est normal. Bon, il faut arrêter. M's father doesn't think she's innocent. But what exactly she is guilty of and what led her to join ISIS are questions that remain unanswered. C'est un sœur complètement de mon référentiel, sa sœur de, de, de mon scope, c'est euh, hors périmètre. Je ne je, je comprends pas ça. Je ne peux pas comprendre. Si tu la vois aujourd'hui, tu, tu saurais quoi de lui dire à elle À elle mm. Lui dire, je crois qu'on est au-delà des mots. Moi, je crois que je la prends dans mes bras et puis on pleure ensemble, quoi. Je sais pas. Je, je, je sais pas, en fait, ce moment-là, j'en rêve et, et j'en ai peur. Donc, euh, parce que... Bon, a priori, quand, quand je l'ai au téléphone, etc., euh, j'ai ma fille au téléphone. Euh, J'espère que si je la revois un jour devant moi, je pas une étrangère. Voilà, c'est... Bon, je ne pense pas, mais, mais bon, voilà. This man's personal tragedy is the story of a vast number of families across Europe who lost their sons and daughters to a world of radical ideas and brutal acts. As many as 5,000 European nationals are believed to have joined terrorist organizations between 2011 and 2016, according to the EU. And for people in Europe, they should not come back. In polls conducted in countries such as France, 89% of respondents said they feared the return of former fighters, 67% said their children should be left in Syria and Iraq. For this psychiatrist and psychotherapist, the fear is understandable. 
but counterproductive. So if they have parents that say, these peoples are bad, we have to kill these people, and so on, they will adapt by that and think about that and speak in that way, in these voices. But when you get them out of that and you bring them in other situations, they, they will change and they will follow th these ideas and, and talk in other voices. Th there is no psychological theory that, that would state that these children, by being in this situation and having seen awful things, will be as adults or as children and as adults become dangerous. This is uh, based on I don't know what, and on fantasy, yes? These are phantoms we are creating. Professor Gerrit Lutz led a team of experts to northeastern Syria to evaluate the 51 Belgian children stuck in Al Hol, Al Raj, and Ain Isa. He says he didn't meet dangerous children. He met children. We met children who have been trained, Belgian children, and who were in the fights of ISIS. So I have seen awful things. We have seen how their mothers, their parents were killed. Yeah? So they are back in Belgium now, but they are doing fine. Because, and that's our experience with child soldiers in different countries like Colombia, um, Uganda, Congo, yes? All these children have been involved in, in very awful um, uh, situations and, uh, and events. So. These children, it's not because you have been involved in that, that you become dangerous. But experts' opinions haven't been enough to change the perception people have of these children. As weeks become months, their reality is reduced to a plot of desert, surrounded by barbed wire fences and armed guards. A picture many would rather not see. If you pass, uh fermer les yeux ni se boucher les oreilles. On existe, on est là et ils pourront pas nous effacer. Même si ils ont ça les dérange, on existe, on est là. Donc faut prendre une décision, quelle qu'elle soit, faut prendre une décision. Si vous décidez de encourir notre peine ici, il faut le dire et qu'on ait une peine. Là, on n'a pas de peine et ça je je pense pas que ce soit légal dans les lois de internationales. Dans les lois françaises, quelle loi s'applique à nous? After the fog of war, the issue of justice is crucial to building peace. But prosecuting ISIS fighters won't be easy, especially foreigners. At its height, Daesh ruled territory the size of Great Britain and controlled large parts of Iraq and Syria. Over 20,000 foreigners from virtually every country around the world traveled here to fight in the name of the so-called caliphate. Now, many of those fighters are dead. Among those who survived, thousands are in Kurdish prisons all over this area. To address the challenges of investigating and trying ISIS suspects, authorities in the self-administered Kurdish region of Rojava developed their own justice system. Their goal, to establish the truth. We had a choice. We asked for a legal court. We asked for a legal court. We asked for a legal court. But we said, if there is a legal court, we asked for a legal court. We asked for a legal court. We asked for a legal court. مع التحالف الدولي وقلنا حتى في حال لم يتحقق هذا الخيار أيضا. In improvised courtrooms like this one, 7,000 Syrian men have already been sentenced. Over 6,000 more await trial. When asked if foreigners could be tried here as well, the judge answered that he didn't see why not. The new local judicial codes, he says, are in accordance with international human rights standards. Abdul Karim Omar is the top Kurdish official negotiating the fate of foreign ISIS fighters with their countries of origin. He says foreign governments have shown interest in the Kurds' proposal for an international tribunal, which should be established where the crimes were committed and where the evidence and witnesses are in Rojava. <laughs> We 
امریکا ده چی بو جوینی نامو بریتانی و فرانسی و هولندی و بلژیکی سوئدی نروژی دانیمارکی جوینی هات نب درخواستن جو اوا کرنا به دادگی Back in Europe, not everybody agrees that entrusting the Kurds or any other authority or government with such complex cases is the best alternative. On leur fait croire que c'est en étant jugés sur place qu'ils sont le moins dangereux pour les citoyens. C'est le principal argument. En disant, écoutez, ils sont partis là-bas, le problème il est loin. C'est la doctrine française, hein. Garder à distance le plus longtemps possible. Ils resteront pas indéfiniment là-bas, ces Français. On est d'accord. Il va se passer... N'importe quel élément peut faire exploser l'instabilité dans la région, une crise humanitaire sans précédent, une bataille qui arrive et les Kurdes disent « bon, on vous libère ». Ils rentreront en France un jour, ces gens-là. Donc c'est ce qu'il faut dire aux citoyens français. Nabil Boudi représente les nationaux nationales held in Syrie et Irak pour suspected links to ISIS, including via Neouragi, one of 11 French nationals who Boudi says was unfairly tried in the Iraqi capital Baghdad. Mais c'était un véritable fiasco. Fiasco. C'était un naufrage. Les audiences ont duré 15 minutes. On a condamné à mort des individus en les écoutant 15 minutes. Le magistrat a délibéré en une minute. C'est-à-dire, j'ai même pas le temps de finir ma phrase, qui prononçait déjà les peines de mort. At his home, Viennese father Jamel Ouraghi accuses France of organizing his son's controversial transfer from Syria to Iraq. In this phone conversation, one of the last Jamel had with his son, VNA talks about electric shocks and waterboarding as torture techniques used against him and about being forced to sign a confession he never read. Il doit faire une peine, il la fera, c'est normal. Moi, je, de toute façon, je veux qu'il la fasse. Mais au moins ici, on pourra aller le voir et il sera dans de meilleures conditions. Parce que là, s'il prend, comme Macron a dit, il demande la perpétuité, lui, il ne veut pas la peine de mort. Mais c'est 20 ans. Mais 20 ans en prison irakienne et 20 ans en prison en France, ce n'est pas du tout la même chose. Qui dit que dans 5 ans, ils seront encore vivants. On peut très bien les laisser mourir de faim. Ah, mais moi, je ne lui pardonnerai pas, de toute façon. Je n'ai pas l'intention de lui pardonner. Ça, j'ai sur le cœur et c'est quand je le refasse. Là, je lui dirai. Là, actuellement, quand j'ai au téléphone, je ne peux pas l'entasser plus. Vu la situation qu'il vit là-bas, je ne peux pas. Moi, je veux qu'il soit rapatrié, jugé et il fera sa peine. Voilà, moi, c'est tout ce que je demande. Ouragi's lawyer says in this case, France might have violated principles of European law as well as European jurisprudence. Si la présence française est documentée, est avérée dans le cas du transfert, la France sera condamnée par les juridictions internationales et européennes, puisque la France est signataire de certaines conventions, notamment prohibant la peine de mort dans le cadre de la, du Conseil de l'Europe, ce qui signifie que la France n'a pas le droit de transférer ses ressortissants vers un pays où l'on pratique la torture, où l'on condamne à la peine de mort. Oui. Meanwhile, Vianney Ouragi's three-year-old son is thought to be somewhere in our hall. The last picture Jamel received of his grandchild shows a smiley, emaciated boy. Like hundreds I saw in the camps, trapped as their childhoods waste away. Very few are lucky to foresee a way out. Et là, ta maman, elle, elle essaye de te ramener, c'est ça Elle a dit, elle va essayer tout. Guillaume, not his real name, was taken from Paris by his father four years ago. Il nous a dit que dans les vacances, les vacances, il a dit qu'on part au Turc, six jours, quatre jours comme ça, on revient. La nuit, mon père, notre père nous a dit, faites vos affaires et tout. Et on a marché dans la voiture, trois jours, quatre jours comme ça. Juste ça marche, dans la voiture, on change. 
On a changé trois voitures comme ça. Jusqu'à ce qu'on part à Guillaume's father was killed in the fighting. His two brothers died in an airstrike. Alone, he was hustled from place to place and at the age of 12, ended up in four Syrian prisons. Après ça, chez Daddy, là-bas deux jours, après Hazaka, ils m'ont dit c'est la dernière présente de moi, tu pars en France. Et demain, je suis venue ici. Et là, ça fait combien de temps Un an et quatre, cinq mois. Guillaume was then transferred to the Hori Center, a juvenile detention camp turned rehabilitation facility in 2017. Over 500 children have gone through its de-radicalization programs. Today, the nearly 100 left include Russians, Finns, a 17-year-old from Trinidad, and Guillaume, who says he misses McDonald's, Disneyland, and his mother. The director of the center, who lost a brother to ISIS and now works to give the so-called Cubs of the Caliphate a new beginning, says these children deserve better. Exactly what kind of risk these children pose is something governments continue to grapple with. Victims and heirs of the so-called Islamic State, they now embody a dilemma for authorities that have yet to come up with policy to address their status. Under the current circumstances, Guillaume and everybody else here have a hard time dreaming about the future. Une fois que tu, que tu rentres en France et que tu retrouves ta maman et que tu retrouves tes amis, ta famille, qu qu'est-ce qu que tu aimerais faire Travailler. Tu es un peu jeune pour travailler, non Je sais pas. Tu voulais aller à l'école, peut-être Oui, ça, ça c'est l'école, c'est obligé. C'est ça, c'est l'école. Après, quand tu finis l'école, tu as 18 ans. Mm -hmm. Là-bas, après, ils te demandent laquelle euh, métier tu veux travailler. Après, ils t'apprennent. Là-bas, l'école. Les gens m'ont dit comme ça. Moi, en je suis France pas... Oui. Moi, je l'ai pas fait. Je sais pas, c'est les gens qui m'ont dit. Mais là-bas, je demande à ma mère qu'est-ce que je travaille. Moi, je sais pas. It's a tall order, defining what peace will be made of now that the war is over. Left in a whirlwind of fear and resentment, Guillaume and the other children of ISIS might not be able to claim a role for themselves in the future of Europe. Victims of our fear, they are now stuck between a world of unimaginable horrors and ours.